Well, Lisa Preston, welcome to Tongue Tied, Ride and Tie Interviews. Uh, unlike some people I interview, you are no stranger to Ride and Tie. You're actually a lifetime member, and I'm thankful for that. But but even before then, I think you've had such a neat uh, life and career. You have been a paramedic and a police officer, and you're actually here today because you're an author, and we're going to get to your book in a little bit. Uh, but tell me a little bit about your career and about your love of the outdoors, and then about how you got into Ride and Tie. Oh, trails are my happy place. It just restores me. It's so peaceful. And it is my favorite thing to be out in the woods on a skinny dirt road or a skinny trail or cross country, figuring out how could we get from this mountain to that trail I know is down there. And I just, I choose my home by how good the trail access and how many trails there are from there. I had about a million where we lived in Washington and a million acres of trails and there's 2 million here. Wow. Wow. Yeah. I like a lot of dirt to play in. So that that's my deal. This is my that's my happy place is play on trails and running like you did too or hiking it or being on my blessed horse. It's just my happy place. Oh, that's great. How did you find riding time? I don't remember how I originally knew about it. I, I like to read pretty broadly and, and I tend to remember a lot of things and I I like eclectic things. I remember something like more than 20 years ago, my shewer in Washington State saying, have you ever heard of this bride and tie thing? And I said, oh, yeah, but you'd need somebody with a sporty little Arab and you'd need another runny buddy. And, you know, somebody with some adventure guts. And he goes, oh, I shoot for these loons up the hill. I don't, oh, my kind of people. Uh -huh. so he put me in touch with Don Betts and I was at a ride and tie within weeks and I did the championship that year. Wow. How about that? And and, and now I love to hear that there's a horseshoe or was involved in that since we're going to get to that in a little bit with the novel. How that that's really cool. That's really cool. Good. Yeah. He was just passing on information. He then yeah. thinking, what is this thing? Birds <laughs> and butterflies or whatever. It just sounded so weird to him. Yeah. 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 Well, and it does to most people, doesn't it, when they first hear about it. Yep. Yep. Sure that's, that's neat. Well, um, tell me a little bit about how you got into writing. You know, I've always loved stories. As a little girl, I didn't think there were enough horse stories, so I used to write them. Oh, wow. And I always wrote stories, and I always paid attention to stories. And a big backbone of all stories is why is that person thinking that or making those choices? There's all sorts of drivers to human behavior that often the human doing that behavior isn't aware of. And I've just always found thinking about why somebody behaves the way they do very interesting. Um, so I always wrote, and then I, I just, it takes a lot of time. You're, you're going to do a million words usually before you get there. And I finally got there after I was able to retire from the police department. I had enough time that I could stand there looking at a screen on a, blue day and make myself stay inside instead of getting out on the trails long enough to stick with it for actual novels and then rewrite it and rewrite it again and again. Wow. Wow. And obviously you're taking so much of your experiences. You've written a couple of thrillers and then you've got the Rainy Dale Horseshoer mysteries. Uh, so uh, the, the police side is in there, of course, and, and the horse side is in there and all that. And that, that's just so wonderful. And then that does slide us into your, your book, uh, The Clincher, is the first of, of three. Uh, Rainy Dale is your uh, a heroine in these books, a, a main character. She is a farrier, which I think is wonderful. Uh, our farriers, are, uh, for, for our horses, are also not men, and that is just great. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, they borrowed this this book, uh, um, uh, this very copy, uh, to read it. And I, I knew that they would enjoy having you know reading a book, not only about farriers, but farriers, that, the, a, a, a strong woman uh, character. Uh, how did you, and maybe this is this is self-evident, but how did you decide uh, first to write about a farrier uh, and then make that farrier a female and then throw right and tie into the first novel? You know, I think I was really captivated by ride and tie when I was first introduced to it. And I wrote The Clincher a long time ago. Sometimes when you're a writer, this book isn't selling or it's not the one that got you an agent or the agent didn't manage to sell that one. They sold this one. So the order in which things are published are often not the order in which things were written. I wrote The Clincher, I want to say 20 years ago, but I, I could be wrong on that. Uh, and it came out maybe five years ago. Mm -hmm. 
and then there was a book a year for a while and uh then I was asked to do some anthologies and got permission from my publisher to use those same characters because it's a lot of fun to do a short story with those same characters and the readers really get a kick out of that too because I could set them not in the seasons of the story where this occurred this book occurred three or six months after the last book I could go back five years or I could go jump in time forward 10 years so I did that with some short stories but to figure out how to get that in out there into the world I it was natural for me to, to have a woman doing what's traditionally a man's job I did that myself as a paramedic for the fire department, as a cop for the police department. It was, it was, it's just interesting. And it's a, just a different world being a woman and having to be that physically strong and to compete on your own merits. And like you said, hey, ride and tie, it's, it's wonderfully egalitarian, no money sport. And I love those things about it. <laughs> Yeah, super. Well, great. Well, let's talk just a little bit about the book. I'm not going to give away, you don't never give away a mystery. Um, uh, and, I, and I cannot uh, recommend this book highly enough. A couple things I love about it is that it, it you do such a great job, uh, in, in my opinion, of character development and how you bring Rainey along. She's got this, she's a young woman in her early 20s, but, but she's got a, a difficult past but you don't drop it that on us at the beginning. It just comes out a little bit as the novel comes on, but it really helps to get to understand her. And, and you do such a great job of, uh, of, of helping uh, understand the, the, um, the farrier world and the, the ride and die world. You're great. I have a great turn of phrase. This isn't really a turn of phrase, but I love early in the novel, you call uh, ride and die a wackadoodle sport and a rainy does. Uh, and, and that's just, that's, that's perfect. Um, my favorite page in the paperback is 216 because in there you, you are, are writing about ride and tie rainy and her boyfriend. Oh, again, I only give it away too much, but, but they are needing to get a, a, a fair amount of distance. Uh, and they only have one horse between them. And Rainey's already mentioned a couple of times in the novel that she knows about ride and tie and this kind of thing. And so they decided to ride and tie a boyfriend is not that great of a runner, but he, he knows he's got to give it a shot. And so they are now engaged in this long uh, cross country trek, uh, uh, doing ride and tie in order to get where they need to go. And if you will read for me, starting uh, with uh, where it says guy was a good man and to the bottom of that page. And then I want to talk about uh, some of that. Okay, from the paper back on 216, you wanted me to read. So Guy was a good man, a novice riding bareback under a full moon because we were going to go stop a killer. I ran on. It's a quiet feeling, remote and peaceful and a little scary running a trail under moonlight. And I thought, this riding tie is what life is like. It's being on your own, but being part of a team, pulling together, but doing your part. I ran like I was running for more than myself, and I was winded when I saw Misty pawing under a pine tree. I'd probably only been alone on the trail a few minutes since Guy rode by. Not to be accused of dilly-dallying, while I ought to be pulling my load, I untied and hopped on Misty in one leap, sorting out the Makati as she trotted off under me. Bless her, the little mare had it all figured out now. Catch Guy, lope past him a ways, and when I slowed her, pick a tree that looked like a nice place to rest. It occurred to me that this ride and tie thing is a type of race more natural to a horse than anything else we ask of them. These beauty beasts are built to run a piece and rest, run a piece and rest. They were never meant to run three or a hundred miles straight or tussle with a steer or blaze around barrels in an arena or jump five foot fences 30 times in a row. Folks have made horses do a lot of nonsense. Some pretty hard riding was required to catch Guy, and I wasn't on the ground very long during my afoot spells. Realizing that he was making more mileage running than me, I swore under the moon that next time I hit the dirt, I'd make Guy ride his heart out to catch me. That's great. Wonderful. Thank you. So this is written by somebody who understands and knows Ride and Tide. Do you have a story or two about a, a, a race you've been in that you can share? Sure. I know you do, too. I, yeah. it's been, there have been some moments that were just crazy. I ran past a horse, my horse once, um, and somehow got past the runner too. <laughs> he had gone, he tied her and he, they told us later other riding tires said, whoa, that's a good place to hide a horse. 
And uh, then he went the wrong way a little bit, just enough that I was able to ride pa run past him. And I ran for about three hours, about 20 miles. I did most of the race, <laughs> 25 or maybe it was 18, but it was a long time. Mm -hmm knew that there was a problem but the only thing you can do is forward progress mm -hmm. that, that's my job he has to go back and find the horse because he's the one who tied it there um the last championship i did was outrageously hysterical to me as my partner i had been on a three-day running vacation and i was on that run that weekend with jen shelton world-class runner who said who heard here's about the sport from me and the championship was outside of Ashland, Oregon, where she was going to be that year. And she said, I want to do that. I want to do it with you. So you can ride. She said, you ever rode as a kid? Well, I rode as a kid. So to me, that's a lot of street cred right there. <laughs> you're, you're fine with you rode as a kid. And she comes the night before the race to the camp, hops on Savvy and says, okay, how do you make it go? <laughs> uh, wow, this is going to be hard. <laughs> There's going to be an ER trip involved here. <laughs> it was just hysterical. We were prepping the night before. And my partner uh, back in Washington, he and I had dialed it in. We did not waste time. We had things figured out. Like we did the fly in exchange. I would literally put his foot in the stirrup as I abandoned the horse. And we learned to do the valet system instead of both leapfrogging. So I'm talking to her about things I'm going to do as I go into the vet check. You know, we, we backtrack from the vet checks. I know where that quarter mile is. I know where the eighth mile is. And I know where I'm going to be hopping off her. Even though it's my horse to ride, I'm going to be running beside her. I'm going to be popping her girth off as I'm running in. And she's going to be pulsed down. As soon as somebody gets in there, they can leave because I bring a horse in, pulsed down and quiet. And I said to Jen, you have to tighten the girth. I will have loosened it. Don't you dare get on her without tightening the girth. She said, okay, what's a girth? <laughs> I showed her the belt. Here's a belt on the saddle. And, and she was great. She had this in her head and she ran into the first vet check saying, I got to tighten the girdle. I got to tighten the girdle. <laughs> and people were looking at her like, Lisa, from what planet did you get this chick? Oh, that's great. That's great. Uh, I, I guess I had done four or five races before I learned how to tighten the girth. I, my wife would get the, the horse saddled up. My daughter and I were partners early on, and I was just the jockey, much like, like your partner. And one time I was actually part with somebody else, and I got ready to get on him, and the saddle just kind of you know came off almost underneath him. And luckily, my partner was within earshot, and I said, you got to come back and help me because I had no idea what to do. So, yeah, it's it, some of the, the 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 things we do to the novice uh, riders is pretty pretty wild yeah yeah you mentioned have, your oh i'm sorry go ahead i was going to mention i use loop reins solid uh -huh. reins one side to the other and i taught her look you're going to have to do the second vet check so toss the reins over her head you'll have mm -hmm. to that way don't just leave the reins over her neck but toss them back over i didn't think i don't think i said that put the reins back yeah. before you got her well she didn't she didn't she got on the horse without putting the reins oh, no. <laughs> over the horse's head. Yep. So she's just making a solid left circle around <laughs> what she can't do. And she screamed at my husband, Barry, something ain't right here. <laughs> oh, that's great. That's great. Oh, um, sure. So you mentioned your horse a minute ago and, and the horse in, in the, in what we read, uh, it picks it up so, so quick. Tell me about your uh, horse or horses that you have owned that you love. Cause we all love talking about our heart horses. Well, I have two half techies. Um, they, my little one looks like a full techie, even techie breeders, uh, think she's a full techie, but they're half Arab. Um, and they are built for endurance. I, I like jumping. I really like and techies, unlike Arabs, have a long head, long neck, long back. So they're built for jumping also. But they're also that skinny build that radiates heat well and thin coat, thin muscles. But they have a nice deep, deep heart girth. So they are built for endurance. I, I did Tevis on the little girl. Yeah. Back that same year, I did the championship with Jen, I think it was. Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Good, good. Um, well, I love how you put in that that uh novel misty the horse she gets it is it misty or missy 
Misty, right? Uh, it's Misty. Yeah, Misty. It's like a stolen horse. Y yes, so she yes. All that, kinds of stuff going on there. Exactly. She's she's stolen and was 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 uh, harbored up in the woods, and they find her, and, and now now they're getting her back. And um, uh, but and she's never done riding tie, but she picks it up and you know, just like that. And and that has been my experience as as well. Uh, uh, how have you trained your horses to to do riding tie? I've trained them by doing it and mm -hmm. um, skills to be tied up in the woods because I'm going to work on a trail or to tail up a hill because I'd rather it was a little bit easier than on me than me just running it, but a lot easier than her, than her carrying me up it. Mm -hmm of those things just as a basic good trail horse early early on and i carry on my saddle a little tiny four millimeter lead rope uh -huh. that you can just hook onto the reins so that you can tail with directional ability or tie on i keep on the front of my saddle a very heavy duty twister tie mm -hmm. and secure the reins because i often just ride without the reins for miles i mean she's mm -hmm. very good and responsive to the seat and aids but dumping the reins and then securing them before you hop off to do the tie is really handy. You're not going to tangle up. The reins aren't going to fall down or hang up on her leg or anything else like that if you secure the reins. And I do that before I even bail off the horse. And she starts to realize, she can tell that I'm securing the reins. I look at a tree and she goes, oh, this tree right here? Yep. That tree right there. Thanks, sweetie. And then they they look over their shoulders looking for their runner before mm -hmm. he them. It's wonderful and amazing how they go, I get it. Yep. Yep. It really is. I was out just last weekend with uh, three other people and we were doing riding tie practicing and <clears throat> the, the horse I was riding, uh, we got some separation between two horses and he wasn't happy about that, of course, at first. And um, when I first tied him, he's screaming down the trail for the horse that he knows is ahead of him. But as soon as I start off, he turned and faced the other way and is screaming back down the trail for, for Carrie because he knows. I, I Now I got to yell at her, come get me because I want to yeah. go to the source. They they yeah. pick it up so fast. Yeah. It's cool. That's he wants cool. his other runner. Come on, let's yep. go. <laughs> yep, 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 yep. So you say here that uh, riding ties is, is what life is like. It's being on your own, but being part of a team, pulling together, but doing your part. Uh, uh, I don't know if you can tell, but tell me a little more about riding tie and life. We're going to get philosophical here. <laughs> okay, let's get philosophical. I really like being on my own. I really like being of service to others. I like to feed people or or help them with chores or, or spend time with them. And you can tell the difference between an introvert and an extrovert actually by whether or not being out on their own or being around a group fills them and them or whether or not they need a rest out from that and i'm a i have the skills to do extroversion but that's a learned skill set i really like being out on the trails and i'm not really alone because i'm with my horse and my dog generally <laughs> and maybe one friend <laughs> I, it, it's just wonderful to be alone and, and to do your own thing but it's also really wonderful to be part of something much bigger it, it just is i've been on races where i have seen so extraordinary community and sportsmanship at that same championship, Rachel, mm, I'm, I'm blanking. I'm sorry. Wonderful. Rachel. She was shackled forward then. I don't think she's shack shackled forward anymore, but she, I was up ahead and I was on foot and my horse, my partner ran, rode the wrong way off the trail. She missed a ribbon and she was just hauling and Rachel quit her race and chased my partner down mm -hmm. and women at her stop, turn around, turn around. And Jen saying, why? Well, cause you're going the wrong way. And, but Rachel went and chased her down. I'd seen my, my first championship, a gal just having all kinds of trouble mounting a horse that was just spinning circles, being an idiot, and several strong runners who were just ready to duke it out for serious placing, just stopped what they were doing, grabbed that horse, made it behave, and helped the girl on. I, and I just love that. I, I love the sense of community of reprioritizing really quickly because this person needs help. Yep, yeah, I, I do too. And I think one of the the... the nice byproducts the fact that w when you run a marathon or an ultra marathon or a trail race or whatever and it's just running you just show up an hour before and you run the race and you go home and and there's not time to build the community but if you got horses you got to camp with them and it takes time and that almost forces that and and, and that's been my experience too it, it's one of the things i love riding tie so much uh, and that really leads me into to my next question where i want to go here um I love the fact that Ride and Tie is is uh, not only egalitarian uh, uh, in terms of age and experience and that kind of thing, but also in terms of gender. 
um, because some of my favorite partners are women and some of my favorite partners are men and some of my favorite competitors are women and some of my favorite competitors are, are men. And we all get to be together and kind of mix it up together. And, um, and it's really not an example of, of who is, what, what gender is better. It, it's who's worked harder. Uh, and, and oftentimes who gets uh, the, the, the lucky turn, the horse doesn't get loose. The horse doesn't go lame or throw a shoe or, or, or whatever, um, and, or get off course or whatever. Um, and I just love that about Ride and Tie. And I love uh, Rainy because she is a strong, strong woman. I'm sure that's true of, of you as well. And, um, and and I love the fact that just last year for the 50th anniversary of our sport, the winning team was the first ever all-female team when you count that the horse was a mayor uh, as well. Um, so talk to me a little bit about um, both Ride and Tie and, and life in general uh, um, as a, a the, the way it helps us as an egalitarian sport or the way it allows women to, to really show off their, their strengths as well. Well, as you put it so well already, I, it is so wonderfully egalitarian. I like that we're competing also across the ages. You can have mm -hmm. a competing with a grandpa and mm -hmm. it's very cool. There are a lot of ride and tie families that are the actual child competing with their actual grandparent and they're, you know, the aunt is in the vet check taking care of things. It's very community, a collection of wonderful families. And that's just so good for us. It's yeah. people were meant to be in yeah. small yeah. communities. We weren't meant to be in big, big cities. Oh, that yeah, that that's beautiful. And we do we we build these tiny little communities at the camp, um, and yes. then of course the next time around we come back. There was somebody on the 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 Facebook page uh, just in the last few days saying, "Now I've I've never done this before. I want to do this. Uh, are people going to be nice to me out there on the trail if I don't know what I'm doing?" And it was so great to see see people say, "Absolutely, you've got no problem. You know, if, if any problem you have, they will like you said a minute. They'll stop and 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 take care of it for you or whatever." Well, um, Rainy Dale has three novels. Are there any more in the works for Rainy? Or, or I... We'll see on that. I write under a couple of different names. I, I do such different works. It was a push to just have that horseshoe mystery series under the same name I did. Psychological thriller, book clubby books, and psychological uh, suspense, and I'm also doing nonfiction. Uh, I did nonfiction animal care and training. It was already so eclectic, and publishers really don't think write readers are smart enough to handle the idea that a person can have, you know, ten different ideas in their head and ten, ten different very diverse interests. I think people are smarter than publishers give them credit for, but I, I do get the thing they do about oh, let's brand this this way and. There's a whole marketing world of the of uh, literary endeavors that isn't really my cup of tea, but it's the tea that serves. So that's what you drink. There you go. So tell me <laughs> your, your other how we would find the the other um, books. Um, Moon. It was called The Measure of the Moon, and I just call it Moon. Um, and uh, Orchids in Stone was my first published novel, and then the other rainy book or other anthologies uh, that I wrote short stories for. Um, one of them was called uh, Mystery Most Edible, and that won what's called the Anthony Award. It's a big deal in the mystery writing world, and that shows Rainey and Guy in just their first days together. Okay. And then this came out a year ago. Um, I did a story for this anthology called Christmas Cookies Mysteries, the Oak Ridge Boys Christmas Cookie Album. Oh, and wow. A song title from that particular music album the guys did, and we wrote a story that fit that song title. And I did that one with Rainey and Dale ten years down the road. Oh wow! Well, yeah. the, the 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 culinary pieces there, are obviously, because um, a guy is a chef, uh, and so I, I'm assuming that's that's how you get those culinary titles, right? It actually wasn't. Um, you know, oh. I asked to do a short story, and this is the piece that where it needs to fit and as a writer you know that's your job yeah there there are very different culinary things there than what you're thinking okay okay well I, I, i'm gonna check those out because i have so much enjoyed uh, this series so so and i and the other two i haven't, I haven't read the other two but you really have piqued my interest so i'm i'm, I'm I, I do love your your work so um if somebody is thinking about doing ride and tie what would you how would you encourage them i would 
take my horse out and even just by yourself, do it. Even though I realize you're, you might not have a partner with you at the time, tie your horse up, run up the road, run past your horse, go get your horse, go take a run. And you don't have to be some hot shot runner. You just don't. You could even hike it if you wanted to, but try to jog a bit, you know, do. And, and realize in two weeks, you're much stronger than you thought you were. You really can run for 30 miles. You might not think you can, but, you know, in three months you can. Mm -hmm. Pretty cool what our bodies can do. You can run up that horrible, horrible hill without ever taking a walk step. It's, it's marvelous. Yep. Then get a friend who, who does it. Hopefully somebody who's close to your leg length. <laughs> yep. That would be nice. Trick out your saddle a bit, the same way you would for endurance. Um, and I probably even do it more being a riding tire than most endurance people do because I do a full sheepskin. I did Tevis in running shorts and sneakers. Mm -hmm. You can wear that for 100 miles. You really can. Um, I would teach the horse to stand well then with people, other horses running past it. Uh, when I did that championship with Jen, I realized you know, those first mounts, because championships are so much bigger. The turnout is so much bigger. The distances are longer. There's just a lot of energy. And, you know, usually somebody's horse is loose and careening around at the start. And there's bucking and somebody's going to get dumped. And I was pretty worried about Jen for that. So it was a risk to do. But I said, we're going to switch two times in the start. In those first few hundred yards, we're mm. going to get off the horse. I'm going to hand her to her. And you're in charge of that horse for a while. And you don't have to ride the horse to be the person right. who's the right. horse. So she ran with the horse, hands it back to me. I get on, I get off. And that's what we did. And then she ran 13 miles. And she beat all but like two her horses. And yeah. she was such an just off the charts, amazing runner. I remember uh, one runner saying to me, who are you with? I, my horse thinks it's ch chasing a cheetah. It's <laughs> Oh, that's great. That's great. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for your time and for, for, for doing this uh, for us. Uh, I appreciate it so very, very much. And I, I hope to maybe see you out on a ride and tie race together one of these. We're on the opposite sides of the country, but maybe yeah. I'll get out there. You get over here. So That would be great. great. But that would be wonderful. I've got family in Tennessee and cousins in South Carolina and North Carolina and Georgia and all over. It'd be great to come out and see you. Sounds great. Sounds great. Well, thanks again, and we will sign off.